Howard was a, was a pulp writer, you know, and like most of them, he wrote very fast and he wrote a lot. He wrote hundreds and hundreds of stories for the various pulp magazines, uh, of which only, as I say, about 19 were about that one character, but that's what is stuck. And uh, various publishers kind of kept it alive through the next decades. Uh, uh, Gnome Press did for some Arkham House, these small uh, oh, weird publishers. Oh, I remember publishers. Arkham House. I'd mm -hmm. forgotten all about that. Yes. and. Uh, they kept it going, and, and Sprague de Camp was one of the people who uh, was trying to keep uh, this old stuff going. But then the uh, the movie was, the first comic books picked up the character, mm -hmm. and then the movie uh, came out, and Tor Books got the rights, acquired the rights to the character. And they were going to start doing a, a, a series of, of pastiches written by different authors about the character. and. Uh, Sprague de Camp, or Catherine, it was probably Catherine, called my agent and said, would John like to lead off the series? And my agent called me, and so I thought about it, and I said, yeah, no, I'd rather write about my own characters. And then uh, my wife and I bought a house and had to come up with a whopping down payment. So I said, are Sprague and Catherine still interested in me leading off this uh, tour series about Conan? And she called, and they said yes, and I said, all right, I want, I'll, I'll do four. I said, and uh, they agreed to that, and I ended up doing eight. But it was it was fun, and as with the other stuff, I didn't have to do a whole lot of research because I already knew the character pretty well. I'd read all the stories, and uh, uh, in, in the mo mostly because because I came along too late for the pulps, I read them mostly in the in the reprints and uh, Gnome Press. And uh, what what editions. period when you say Conan the Barbarian? What what does that actually mean in terms of the time frame? Well, the time frame is it's actually a mythological period. It's supposed to be before any recorded history that there was. Uh, Howard created this, what he called the Hyborian Age, in which uh, this is a period when all the continents were still stuck together. And oh, they wow. Had, even, this is that far back. And that there were civil, the, the, the idea is that uh, hum, the human civilization goes back way farther than, than people. You are mean known. past Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon and back into something more you exciting? Know, pretty much back you know, there. And, uh, it's, and it was. Uh, a period that's sort of a mishmash of uh, of classical and medieval culture and technology, and so forth. And uh, plus, there's a lot of fantasy. Has it magic works for one thing. There are sorcerers, and uh, and there's magic going on. And there's you know, various gods of of uh, of you know, varying degrees of of uh, benevolence or malevolence interfering in things. And this character Conan is. He's from the way far north, which is not civilized. He's a, a clansman. It's, it's sort of based on uh, proto-Celtic. Uh, his, his homeland is, is something like the Scottish Highlands, and they, they're a, a clannish people. And uh, he comes down into, uh, into the civilized lands and sort of roisters around and just generally raises hell. And uh, he's pretty crude, and but he's also smart. And he, uh, he, he eventually becomes a mercenary general and then finally a king himself. Like a high king maybe in sort ancient of. Ireland or Scotland? Yeah, it's, it's, it's was there really like any that. plot to these or was it just kind uh, of, no, it, it, pulp it, was pulp, it right? It was a string of short stories, yeah, and he, and he wrote very fast uh, as he had to because you know, they paid two or three cents a word, but you know, if you could write enough you could make a decent living in the depression on two or three cents a word. Is that how pulp worked? It paid by the word? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because All I know the did. Victorian people are always saying to me, you know, I can't, well, I say to me, maybe nobody else does, I have trouble reading a lot of Victorian novels mm -hmm. like Dickens because they go on forever. And what I learned is they all got paid, paid by, by the, the word, word, too, and it was mostly serial publication, not really so much in pulp, mm -hmm. but a, a higher quality, but nevertheless, magazine publication is how most of that stuff came out. Yeah, there were a few that were different in the 19th century, uh, some some paid by the line, and then so suddenly you get these very short sentences in, and one-word you know, one sentences and, oh. and so forth because they were just, you know, it, it looks almost like a movie script because they were, uh, uh, they were getting paid by the line, so they made, put as many lines in a story as, as possible. But most paid by the word. Uh, I was reading back a few years ago uh, Poe's only novel, Narrative of A. Gordon Pym. And a lot of it takes place at sea. And he goes into this one digression at one point about stowage on a ship and exactly how it works and exactly how you stow things on a ship and how you, how you have to move them around to, to keep the trim on the ship. And they had these, these big 
that I didn't know, these big screw presses that would press the cargo down to keep it from shifting. Okay. Over, and all was very interesting, but had nothing whatever, of course, to do with the story, and I was figuring old Edgar was getting paid by the word. So you know, he'd throw in stuff like this, uh, just to, essentially just to pad it out. I'm not at all surprised. Um, and you know, but today, when we're talking about novels having grown too long, it isn't because authors are paid by the word anymore, because no. there's all different system. I think computers have just allowed, you know, it all to expand, and it's very difficult to get edited down anymore. Also, uh, publishers just believe in bigger books. They think that people, they're going to be paying about the same amount they want to buy a longer book to entertain them that much longer. So when you were talking 50,000 words before, you're now talking, what, 80, 90,000? And thrillers minimum, minimum, go up to 110, yeah, minimum, 100 and... Minimum 75,000. And, okay. that, and that's pretty short these days. Uh, it, it used to be when one of my colleagues, especially in science fiction, I started out in science fiction, had turned in a 90,000 page, or 90,000 word novel. We all thought, 90,000 words, you know, the world did you do that? But it was uh, in the 70s and 80s, Writers like James Clavell started writing these enormous bestsellers, Taipan, Shogun, Shogun, things like that, and these huge doorstop books, and Stephen King, and a few others. Colleen McCullough. Yeah. yeah. These became huge bestsellers, so suddenly that was the thing to have, great big long novels. Uh, I have great difficulty myself uh, writing that way because I, I sort of came up through this, you know, writing tight short novels and uh, I can do 75,000 without too much trouble. Some of mine you know, up to 90, 95,000. Beyond that, uh, I just feel like I'm, I'm padding it out. Well, to, to a great degree you are. I mean, Ann Perry's mysteries invariably have a section about laundry mm -hmm. and about ironing, you know, and mm -hmm. it, it's a little bit like the storage on the ship, although kind of fascinating. But am I not remembering that in the Maybe it was the 50s or the early 60s. You had people like Samuel Schellebarger. You mm -hmm. had uh, Forever Amber. Mm -hmm. You had Anya Seton. Weren't those all big books? They or did big, I just think they, so? Because I was a kid. They were big for the time. But they, they probably ran, most of them, 70, 75,000 words, which was big for the 1950s. You, know, you had the big, the great big sprawling books like uh, The Naked and the Dead and From Here to Eternity and a few others uh, at that time. Uh, but only a few authors wrote them, and, and really, they they pretty much had to fight their publishers to get that much wordage in in the books. They publishers thought that was just impractical, and especially when when they went to paperback, they were actually hard to print. Uh, if you find those big old fifties uh, lar large long novels, they tend to kind of fall apart. Well, they do, and of course, the paper bound the glue and all doesn't yeah. hold up. I think it may have been because I was I was young, and it mm -hmm. was a big achievement for me to read a book that long. But you know, in crime, um, if you look back to Agatha Christie and whatever, mm -hmm. their ideal was to write a book not much longer than the ones you're talking about, fifty, mm -hmm. sixty thousand words, because they really, if they were doing a very elaborate puzzle plot, they want somebody to be able to read the book essentially in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the novels of that period in particular were, uh, uh, would be considered novellas now. I think that's true, but a lot of it was because they wanted the reader to be able to mm -hmm. keep the whole puzzle in their head, so, you know, after dinner and before bed, they could pick up a Christie mm -hmm. and work their way through it, and she resisted bitterly having to expand her books, sometimes to um, a workable number of signatures, since publishing demands, um, mm -hmm. with the economies of paper and other things, sometimes binding books, it works out better if you have 32-page signatures, so readers don't know there's a lot that goes on here, mm -hmm. you know, with finished yeah. books. Well, you wrote the Conan books between 85 and 95, Yeah, it looks mm -hmm. like, and what was it like to write somebody else's character? Um, well, it was it was a different experience, and I knew, I knew the character, I knew the milieu, I knew the other stories, so that was not too uh, too difficult to do. I told them right up front that I was going to, I was wasn't going to try to imitate Robert E. Howard's writing style. Uh, he was a self-taught writer, and it shows. He was an eccentric, and if you try to imitate somebody like that, it looks like you're trying to parody them. So I said I, I would try to get the the feel of their of, of those stories down pat, but I wouldn't try to to uh, write them exactly you know, in his style, and it seemed to have succeeded. The, the books did quite well, and to this day, I'll, I'll check on websites, of the, you know, there, there's a whole fan bases of uh, 
Robert E. Howard fans and fans of the character, and most of them seem to think that the ones that I did are are the best of those the, uh, those tour uh, pastiches. There were